Hello and welcome back. In section 2.4, we get to work with absolute value equations. So the idea of an absolute value is that it is a distance. Specifically a distance on the number line. Now, distances can be positive, distances can be zero, uh, distances cannot be negative numbers. So that is one rule with absolute values. Absolute value of A has to be at least zero. Now, if anything else is happening outside of the absolute value, I can't make that assumption anymore. It has to be an absolute value by itself. If I have the absolute value alone, I know that that is at least zero. So, for example, if I ask you to find a number that is eight units away from zero on the number line, it would look like this. Of course, two numbers should come to mind for that. Uh, 8 is 8 units away from 0. Negative 8 is also 8 units away from 0. So we have two possibilities. x could be negative 8, and we union that. So there's our set theory coming back. We union that with x equals positive 8. Uh, we use the union because we want both solutions uh, to be kept. If it was the intersection, uh, that would be an impossible statement. X can't be both negative 8 and positive 8 at the same time. But if we use an or, the inclusive or, this can work. We can accept that a number could be this value or that value. Uh, since both of those are in the set of integers, those would both go in our solution set then. So we would get to keep both of those solutions. So our next one, I'll show you the absolute value equation, and then we'll talk about what it would translate to in terms of picturing a real number line. Uh, so this is really asking us to find a number that is eight units away from 19 on the real number line. So we have our absolute value alone. So that's one of the first things that we're always going to check for is the absolute value alone. If the answer is no, fix that first. If the answer is yes, then proceed to the next one. Next question is, how many ways can this happen? So I'm taking an absolute value and getting 19 for an answer. There's two ways for that to happen. The argument, the stuff inside, could be worth negative 19. And when I take the absolute value, I get positive 19. Or... The argument, the stuff inside, could be worth 19. The absolute value of 19 is also 19. Well, here then we just have two linear equations to solve. Uh, the typical answers to this are either 0, 1, or 2 in the absolute value world. Uh, for linears, uh, and that's all we're going to see is absolute value of linear. Uh, so our first one, we'll add 8 to both sides. So x plus 0 is worth negative 11. So x is worth negative 11 is one possibility. 
And then we'll union that up with what we do on the other one. So we'll add 8 to both sides of this guy. So x plus 0 is worth the 27. So x is 27. Both of these are in our domain. Remember, if we're in Chapter 2, our domain is uh, assumed to be the set of integers. Uh, so since both of these are in the set of integers, we would keep them both. So however many ways we come up with, either 0, 1, or 2, set them up and solve. If you try one out, we're going to try absolute value of x plus 18 is worth 2. So see if you can go through those same steps to solve this absolute value equation. Go ahead and pause it. Come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So step one is the absolute value alone. Yes. Since it's a yes, we move on to how many ways can this happen? So I'm having the absolute value of some number and getting two. There are two numbers that can do that job. So I'll set up the two equations. Uh, so Either the argument, the stuff inside, could be worth negative 2, union that up with the possibility that the argument, the stuff inside, could be worth positive 2. So the first one we solve by subtracting 18 on both sides. So x plus 0 is then worth negative 20. So x is worth negative 20 is one possibility, and we'll union that up with our work for the other side. So x plus 18 minus 18 is worth 2 minus 18. So x plus 0 is worth negative 16. So x is negative 16. Uh, both of these are in the integers. We get to keep them both. So negative 20 or negative 16. Um, so one common question with this is, well, why did we get to keep those? I thought you said absolute values can't be negative. The result of taking an absolute value, I agree, cannot be a negative. That doesn't guarantee that the value of x that will get the job done is a positive or zero, though. So negative 20 plus 18 is negative 2, but the absolute value of negative 2 is indeed positive 2. Negative 16 plus 18 is positive 2. Absolute value of positive 2 is positive 2. So these both do work out. So this is not saying that uh, we have an absolute value worth a negative. It's saying that we have a value for x that happens to be negative that will work out for this. Okay, so next we have a couple examples of, okay, well, what happens if we have some negatives involved? What happens if we have other things on the same side of the absolute value? So first, what happens if we do have some negatives involved? So we'll do absolute value of difference of x and 2 is worth a negative 9. So here... My usual questions, is absolute value alone? Yes, it is. If not, we fix it. Next, we say, well, how many ways can this happen? So I'm claiming I took the absolute value of something and got negative 9. A distance of negative 9. Not possible. So there are no ways for that to happen. We jump right to saying this is the empty set. 
There's no number that will get this job done. All right. So next up, though, uh, we'll take a look at absolute of the difference of 4x and 5. Minus 11 is worth negative 2. Now here's where it, it comes in handy to always go through those couple questions at the start of the problem. It's tempting to see the negative here and say, okay, empty set. Absolute value is not alone. We can't make that decision yet. So is the absolute value alone? No. If it's no, fix it. So absolute value of 4x minus 5, close it up, minus 11, and I'll add 11. is worth negative 2 plus 11. So the addition property of equality. So negative 11 plus 11 will add to 0. Negative 2 plus 11 will add to 9. So now we've turned this into absolute of the difference of 4x and 5 is worth positive 9. Now that we can say yes to is it alone, then we can move on to how many ways. How many ways can this happen? And this can happen in two different ways. I'm out of room on this page, uh, so we're going to continue on the next page. So absolute of the difference of 4x and 5 is worth 9 is where we're going. So there's two ways that that can happen, so I need to cover both cases. So 4x minus 5 could be negative 9. We'll union that up with the possibility that 4x minus 5 is positive 9. So then we're just solving linear equations in one variable. So we add 5 to both sides. 4x plus 0 then is negative 4. So 4x is negative 4. Multiply both sides by a 4, so 4 the 4x is a fourth of negative 4. So 1x is negative 1, x is negative 1. And then we'll union that up with our answer to the other one. So 4x minus 5 plus 5 is 9 plus 5. So 4x plus 0 is worth 14. That gives us 4x is 14. Multiply both sides by a quarter. So 1 times x is worth 7 halves, so x is 3 and a half. So this time, I only get to keep one of my two solutions. So one of these is in the set of integers, one of them is in the set of rationals, but outside of the integers. So when that's the case, I'll keep what I can and then do an Euler diagram. So we have the box for the reals split between the rationals and irrationals. Within the rationals, the integers. Within the integers, the whole numbers. Within the whole numbers, the natural numbers. So our domain, since they didn't tell us what it is in uh, chapter 2 or 3, we assume that it is integers. And negative 1 did land uh, within the set of integers, but the 3 and 1 half landed in the rationals but outside of the integers. So that's our Euler diagram and our solution set for that one. And this was continued from the previous page. Okay, one more together, then I'll have you all try another one out. This one is a little bit shorter. Uh, so this time we'll go with Absolute of the difference of x and 6 minus 4 is worth a negative 5. So the usual questions, so is the absolute value alone? 
In this case, no. If it's no, fix it. I have quite enough space in between my words there. So fix it in this case involves adding four to both sides of our equation. So absolute of the difference of x and 6 plus 0 is worth negative 1. So absolute of the difference of x and 6 is negative 1. Uh, so now that we can answer yes to that one, then we go on to the question of how many ways. How many ways can this thing happen? Absolute is worth a negative. 0, not possible. That means we go to the empty set. So as promised, a little bit shorter of uh, an example to run through on that one. Okay, uh, so let me give you all a couple to play with. Uh, we'll just, we'll do them one at a time. Uh, We'll do absolute of the sum of x and 2 minus 11 is worth negative 5. And go ahead and run through that one, and then we'll put up the next one. Welcome back. So usual questions. Is the absolute value alone? Uh, this one started with a no. So fix it. Uh, absolute of x and 2 minus 11 plus 11 is negative 5 plus 11. So absolute of the sum of x and 2 plus 0 is worth 6. So absolute of the sum of x and 2 is worth 6. So now that we fixed it, now that we can say yes, it is alone, we look at, okay, then how many ways? How many ways can this thing happen? Absolute worth a positive is two ways. So we set up our two equations. So x plus 2 could be a negative 6, uniting that up with x plus 2 possibly being a positive 6. And we'll just solve them both one at a time. So then x plus 0 is negative 8. So x is negative 8 is one of our possibilities. Uh, the other one will subtract 2 on both sides. So x plus 0 is worth 4, so x is worth 4. These are both in the set of integers, so they will both go into our solution set. So negative 8, positive 4. All right, so that was a student try. Um, let me give you one more to play with. So that was the... absolute of the sum of x and 3 minus 2 is worth a negative 8. So go ahead and give that one a spin. Unpause it when you're ready. Okay, welcome back. So absolute value of the sum of x and 3 minus 2 plus 2 is worth negative 8 plus 2. The reason we're doing that is the answer to is the absolute value alone was no. So fix it. So now we have absolute value of the sum of x and 3 plus 0 is worth negative 6. So absolute value of the sum of x and 3 is worth negative 6. Uh, so now that we can say yes, the absolute value is alone, then we move on to how many ways can this happen? Absolute equals a negative. Zero ways for that to happen. So we jump right to the empty set. That's another student try. So that one, a little bit shorter. So we've seen two ways. We've seen zero ways. Uh, I mentioned that there is the possibility of there being one way for something to happen. Uh, so for this next example, uh, we'll look at the sum of absolute value of the sum of x and 3 being 0. 
So the usual questions that you just kind of mentally keep asking yourself. Uh, so is the absolute value alone? And here the answer is yes. So we don't have to fix it. And then how many ways can this happen? Absolute value being zero, there's only one way for that to happen. And that is if the argument, the stuff inside, is worth zero. Uh, all of the other stuff where we had two different ways for it to happen, notice that we had, in each case, a number and its additive inverse as the two possibilities. But zero is its own additive inverse. So we only need one equation. So all we have to do is solve that guy. So addition property of equality, additive inverse on the left, additive identity on the right, additive identity one more time on the left. One solution, it is in the integers, so we'll keep it in our solution set. So it is possible in these absolute value of a linear problem uh, to have only uh, one solution to our equation. Uh, let's see. So next I want to take a peek at one more of these where we have uh, a couple possibilities. So we'll do absolute of the difference of 3x and 2 is worth 5. So is the absolute value alone? Yes. So then we want to know how many ways can this happen? Absolute value of a number is equal to 5. There's two possibilities. The stuff inside could be a negative 5, union that up with the stuff inside could be a positive 5. And then, like before, we're solving linear equations in one variable. So add two to both sides of the equation, so that's the addition property of equality. Additive inverse on the left, arithmetic on the right, additive identity on the left, and we would just bring the right side along. Multiplication property of equality next. So multiplicative inverse on the left, arithmetic on the right. So x is negative 1 is one possibility. And then we do the same thing to our second equation. So addition property of equality. Additive inverse on the left, arithmetic on the right. Additive identity on the left, bring the right along. Multiplication property of equality. Multiplicative inverse on the left, arithmetic on the right. Multiplicative identity and more arithmetic. So this is another one where we do, uh, have two solutions, but only one that we get to keep unless they specifically uh, gave us an expanded domain beyond the integers where you don't get to keep the two and one third. Uh, if you're having trouble remembering how we got from seven thirds to two and one third, fraction bars mean division. So seven divided by three, three will go into seven twice with one left over. And we keep the denominator. So this is another one where we'll put our solution in there and we'll have to make a quick sketch of our friend the Euler diagram of the real number system. So the real split into the irrationals and rationals. Within the rationals, the integers. Inside of the integers, the whole numbers. Inside of the whole numbers, the natural numbers. And we'll make sure that that doesn't overlap there. Okay.
Uh, so our domain will lightly shade in the integers, which notice does still go through the whole numbers and natural numbers. We're shading the whole thing, not just the outer layer of uh, like a donut shape. We're making a disk. Uh, so negative one we keep. Two and one third is outside of our domain. So next I want you all to try one. So absolute value of the sum of 3x and 7 is worth 8. And I'll go ahead and let you work on that. Okay, welcome back. So is the absolute value alone? Yes, it is. How many ways? Two. Absolute value equals positive is always two ways, so we cover both of those ways. So 3x plus 7 could be a negative 8, or 3x plus 7 could be a positive 8. So then we're just solving those linear equations again. So 3x plus 7 minus 7 is negative 8 minus 7. So additive inverse gives us 3x plus 0. Arithmetic gives us a negative 15. Additive identity gives us 3x on the left. Bring it along the right side. Multiplication property of equality. Multiplicative inverse and arithmetic. Multiplicative identity. So we get to keep at least one of our solutions, possibly both. Uh, we find that out when we solve the other one, linear equation. So 3x plus 0 is worth 1, so 3x equals 1 by the additive identity property, multiplication property of equality up next. So 1x is 1 third, so x is 1 third. Uh, so we keep one, don't get to keep the other. So this is another one where you got to make a drawing. So here's our set of reals. Split between the irrationals and the rationals. Rationals contain the integers, the whole numbers, and the natural numbers. Our domain set of integers. We keep the negative 5. We don't keep the 1 third because it's out here in the rationals, but outside of the integers. Negative 5 was within our domain. That's why it's in our solution set. It's a student try problem. Okay, so that should give you enough uh, to work through the problems in uh, 2 4. So I would recommend trying out the 2 4 exercises at the back of chapter 2. And as always, if you have any questions, please get in touch. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Stay safe out there.